Hi, everyone, and welcome to BIM Community Call, our first call in 2021. Our last community call was in October last year, but uh, since then, as you know, a lot of things happened and are still happening, so things constantly move around, which is why we think it's a good idea to update you all on the current situation with BIM and our plans uh, in advance before we publish our roadmap update for the 2021 year. And first of all, let me start with thanking our designers, Alexandra and Daria, who created this beautiful presentation that you're about to see. And of course, our product manager, Sasha Abramovich. So let's get started. During the AMAs and uh, all kinds of presentations that we give, uh, people often ask, what is BIM? People that are new, who are not familiar with our project. So what we're going to do right now is do a very quick recap of what we are and what we're doing. So first of all, as you know, BIM is a privacy coin, confidential cryptocurrency. All transactions are completely confidential by default. That's probably something that you do know about BIM. And not only that, BIM is best in class confidential cryptocurrency, really very great privacy and also usability and scalability and all the other features. However, recently we have started to expand our project into additional areas and uh, probably some of you heard about it. And we are talking about confidential DeFi ecosystem. So today we're going to discuss a little bit what had been did during the last two years. We have recently celebrated our second birthday. It was uh, on January 3rd, 2021. We celebrated two years of our mainnet launch. But we're also going to talk a lot about our plans for the immediate future and also for more like remote future throughout 2021. So first of all, as I said, BIM is an amazing privacy coin. We have great anonymity set with our new Max privacy transactions, and we will talk about that a little bit later. And of course, all our transactions are confidential by default, unlike some other projects that use opt-in privacy, like you can be private if you choose to. In our case, that's not what we are doing. What everything on BIM is completely confidential. And we think it's a very important because we think that confidentiality, privacy in general is very important and that should be the case. And on the opposite, if you want to disclose some information, you can choose to do so, of course, using our opt-in auditability, but by default, nobody can see nothing about you unless you, the person who is using BIM decides otherwise. And we think it's important to give uh, user control over which information he or she wishes to share. We have invested a lot of effort in not only making this superior privacy product, but also making it usable. And with that in mind, we have constantly uh, working, we're constantly working on designing our wallets to make them as usable as possible. We currently have wallets for all platforms, both desktop and mobile, and we think that they are beautiful and we really think a lot about how to make them better, which is especially difficult in general in the cryptocurrency space, but also when we are adding more and more features around our uh, wallets and it becomes more difficult to you know, keep all that in check. But this is what our product manager, Sasha Brabovich and the designers are working on all the time. And we think our results are pretty impressive so far. So BIM has started as confidential cryptocurrency, as I said, launched two years ago and Today, we're going to talk about the next steps, which will happen this year. And the first of these steps is the launch of BIMX, which currently is in testnet, and it was launched on uh, November 19th, so a little bit, like a couple of years, months ago. And in fact, this is uh, the next step, the next like evolution of BIM, because in addition to just confidential transactions and also features like atomic swaps that we already have, we have decided to add smart contact functionality to our platform. And this in turn allows a lot of new applications to be developed on BIM as a platform. And this can include confidential stable coins, wrapped assets, decentralized exchange, lending applications, AMM-based swaps, and others. 
and we will discuss all of these uh, ideas and projects today. So let's start from the beginning, a few words about BIM. So as you know, uh, BIM is originally an implementation of Mimble Wimble protocol, which turned out to be amazing and very uh, powerful, even though the idea itself is relatively simple. However, later, actually in the last hard fork, which was in June 2020, we have also added Lilantus Mimble Wimble protocol as an extension to Mimble Wimble, and this allowed us to create max privacy transactions with anonymity set up of up to 64K. And of course, on top of the basic Mimblewimble protocol, we have also built a lot of interesting features such as completely decentralized atomic swaps that allow you to exchange BIM for a lot of different coins such as Bitcoin, Litecoin, and soon also Ethereum and uh, some ERC20 tokens on Ethereum, specifically the stable coins, and of course, wrapped Bitcoin in a completely decentralized way without any intermediary or third party that needs to be trusted. And we think it's a very important achievement technologically. However, we have also added uh, atomic swap marketplace built in inside the wallet. So you can just download the wallet, open it, and you can perform atomic swaps and uh, create uh, offers for the swaps or accept offers and do it from inside the wallet without having to go into any other uh, location. During the same um, hard fork last year that we have uh, added Lilantus Mimble Wimble, we have also added support for confidential assets. And this is extremely important in the context of everything we're going to talk about today. Confidential assets is actually an ability to um, create new tokens on top of BIM, which first of all, do not require smart contracts. They're just a command that you can run through your wallet and create a new token. But not only that, also all of these new tokens are as confidential as BIM itself. And in fact, not just there are no addresses like you know in, in BIM and all the amounts are of course encrypted, but also um, the type of the asset itself is not visible. So when you look at the transaction, you do not see anything about this transaction, not even the type of the asset that was that's traded and we think it's great for confidentiality. Another interesting feature that we have added a long time ago, and it exists right now on our mainnet, even though it's not exposed in the UI world, it's laser beam, which is direct payment channel similar to the Lightning Network, which is also very interesting. And of course, as I said, we have wallets for all platforms. And needless to say that all our code is completely open source and uh, it was audited several times already. Every time we add a major feature or change the protocol, we audit it. And it was audited by uh, several different independent companies, including List Authority, Kuderski, and SmartDeck, which are all well known in the space and do auditing for many uh, projects. We have a reputation of being this kind of R&D powerhouse. And uh, the reason for that is because we had like 180 releases in two years. Uh, I was very skeptical that our designers will be able to put it on in one slide, but somehow they managed. So basically each tiny dot you see here on this line, each of those dots is a release. And we're talking the releases across all our uh, products, which include Node, UI wallets for desktop and mobile, Android and iOS, and also command line wallet that we have, APIs, uh, Blockchain Explorer, and all of the other products in our ecosystem. So now let's talk about BMAX and what exactly is that we are doing here and how it will help us in the future and what is like other interesting features it enables. So the, the idea of BIMX, as I said, is basically adding smart contracts to BIM. Uh, it's very interesting technologically, but I'm not going to talk about just technology today. I will focus about what it means for users of the platform, for us as like BIMers and uh, how it's going to work and what it will allow us to do. So, Smart contracts on Beam are called shaders. Uh, we call them shaders because of this association with uh, like the gaming industry. They have these shaders running on GPUs, you know, modifying uh, shadows and lighting and everything like that. So in a, in, in a way, this is kind of related to Beam being modified and uh, allowing it to do new things in addition to what it was previously been able to do, like confidential transactions. Now we have more things that we can do. And 
Of course, these contract shaders, they run in the nodes, just like smart contracts on many other platforms. But also the same idea was utilized to make our wallets more powerful because you have, in order to create a transaction, since nothing is visible, you have to use your secret keys, you have to sign things, you have to encrypt things. And it's relatively difficult to create a transaction in Beam in compared to some kind of simple JSON API. And in order to simplify this process, we have created application shaders that try to run inside the wallet using the same technology. And this way we have an application logic separated between the node, which is the contact that's deployed on the blockchain and the application shader, which allows you to easily access this uh, contract and also provide very usable UI for your application that's running on the blockchain directly inside the wallet. And in a minute, we'll see what it means and what we can do with that. As I mentioned, BMX is already in testnet. You can download it from our website and you can play with it. And also uh, there is some initial documentation on that available in our GitHub, in the wiki page. And if you're interested in that, you should probably join our community in general, but also we have two specific communities for BMX users and developers separately. And we will help you with uh, joining this process of developing confidential DeFi applications on Beam, which I think is exciting. And once we have this platform that we will see in a moment when it's going to be launched and what will happen next, the next step is basically being able to create applications on top of this platform because without applications, it's just an infrastructure. And these applications in our mind include several different categories of applications that we think uh, are important and can be usable. So first of all, confidential algorithmic stable coin. Uh, and we are looking at MakerDAO die in this specific example because we think it's a great project and uh, we think that algorithmic stable coins have great future. So making this confidential stable coin, I think will add a lot of value to the users who are otherwise exposed to a lot of risks on open platforms like Ethereum and others. Of course, we're also talking about the AMM-based decentralized exchanges like Uniswap and uh, uh, other similar, similar applications because they are proved to be extremely important in trading process. And uh, they facilitate all kinds of interesting opportunities for trading and arbitrages uh, and things that uh, have been so far only handled by centralized exchanges. So AMM-based DEX, I think is a great example of decentralized exchange application. And of course, uh, lending as the lending market. So you can either take loans or uh, provide loans in crypto and therefore be able to do interesting trades like short positions or long positions, depending on uh, what you want to do. And those are inspired by compound and similar applications. Now, of course, the key question here is what about the liquidity? Like where is this liquidity going to come from? People will just drop everything they're doing and you know sell all the Ethereum and go trade on Beam. So the answer is obviously no. What we are trying to become is not a competitor to Ethereum, but rather we're trying to become this place where you can easily come to from Ethereum or other blockchains. And we'll talk about that in a moment using bridges. And basically you will not have to give up the value that all you already have on Ethereum or any other blockchain Instead, you will be able to seamlessly move this value to Beam, trade it confidentially using this application that I've just described, and then if necessary, move it back. So we will be this place where you will get privacy without having to give up any value that you uh, have already accumulated on other blockchains using this idea of creating wrapped assets through decentralized bridges. And we will talk a lot more about that in a moment. So now let's talk a minute about uh, our adoption or how we managed to make itself uh, known throughout the world and what we have achieved. So BIM is currently listed on about 50 exchanges, including Binance. Uh, it is accepted in like about 350 stores and services, VPN providers and such that require privacy. So you can purchase them using BIM. We have about 20 mining pools that you can join to mine Beam on GPUs. And we have about 4,000 transactions 
per day, all of them completely confidential. We have a lot of great ambassadors throughout the world, and you can see the dots here on the map where they are. And we have about 50,000 community members that are great people. And now to tell us more about that, I will give the mic to Mr. Angus Sullivan from UK, London, London, UK. And you can unmute yourself now and go ahead. Oh, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Cool. Uh, so yes, as Alex was saying that a lot of the, what we have in the community from Beam has been built up and, and a lot of this driving factor has come from the ambassador. Uh, we have many, uh, many of the communities, mostly based in Telegram, but we also have many followers on Twitter, uh, a strong and active and, and especially relating to the miners in Discord uh, and also in Reddit. Uh, for the newsletter that is published weekly on Mondays, except for, for one week that was a little late, uh, we have around 4,000 people subscribed to this and, and getting weekly updates on what's happening with Beam in terms of news and, and uh, on the development and research side. If you haven't subscribed, you definitely should head to Substatic. I will, I will even share the link and, and you can subscribe. Uh, a lot of the community members and also the ambassadors has have assisted with the translation of the wallets. If you look at the mobile wallet, you will see that uh, there is about 14 languages and the same on the desktop wallet. Uh, one thing that we are preparing to launch to the wider community at the beginning of February is Beam Outreach. And this is going to be a platform to incentivize and engage with the community, uh, all with the goal of driving more awareness and adoption and this kind of stuff uh, for Beam. So it's currently in beta uh, and should be launching in, in February, which is now just a week away. Uh, so stay tuned for that. And, and when it goes live, reach out and, and get amongst. In 2001, the, this is one of the big goals, which will be uh, expanding on Beam Outreach and creating a really powerful community-driven outreach uh, program that is uh, an autonomous force for Beam awareness, growth, and community participation. Uh, and I'm excited for it because it's been in the works for a long time, and we're going to launch a confidential asset specifically for Beam Outreach. So uh, by all means, get amongst and, and get involved with that when it goes live very shortly. And so moving on, we're going to Beam China. Yes. I'm going to be giving an update from uh, on Beam China from uh, in, on behalf of Gao Yi. Gao Yi is the leader in China and he's been with us since the magnet launch. Uh, he has a, another few ambassadors that are also working with him. And, and if you go, I mean, if you have WeChat, by all means, join the Chinese community as well. It's really active and they're constantly in communications and, and having AMAs and this kind of thing. Uh, I, I find it very difficult to keep up with what they're talking about because it's all in Chinese. But the, they have communities across WeChat and QQ and also Weibo uh, and we are often in, in communications and, and sort of talking with uh, news outlets and news agencies uh, based on crypto in China. Uh, we have in the past had, had a number of events, uh, co-events with the, whether it's mining, uh, mining farms or mining pools over there and also the uh, news agencies but in 2020 given the, the situation, we haven't had so many offline events at all. Um, for 2020, the goals, of course, will be to onboard more active members to the community and also get them not just in the community, but also to be a part of Beam Outreach and, and sort of be the, the drivers behind the community growth themselves. Uh, and also, we do have a lot of of the updates and communications from Beam coming out uh, translated to Chinese, but hopefully, or at least one of the goals for 2021 will be to have more of the documentation uh, and website and this kind of stuff in Chinese or translated to Chinese. That's great. 
Okay, so our next next speaker is Mr. Agbona from BIM Africa. Let me find you and unmute you. Here you are. All right. Hello, guys. What's up? All right. Uh, my name is Agbona. I'm the, the BIM lead in uh, Africa. And um, so BIM Africa was launched in February 20, 2020. And uh, so far, we've been involved with about 64 di um, different events. Uh, we've been involved with about uh, 30 AMAs, five webinars, 19 third party meetups, and 10 meetups hosted by the BIM Africa community. Uh, we have a very active um, ambassador, network of ambassadors in Africa. And uh, we have this uh, proof of work kind of like ambassador program that keeps the active ambassadors incentivized, while those that are inactive, we kind of like receive them out of the program. Um, so the ambassadors actually help us in developing content, um, attracting influencers that can actually help us promote BIM across the different corners of Africa. And also these ambassadors help us in organizing this third party event, um, organizing meetups and attending third party events. So um, we're actively speaking to two exchanges in Africa to list BIM. Uh, this leading exchanges are uh, Bundle and Roku. Uh, I think Roku, the, I've given them the documentation for them to see how to integrate BIM. But it seems like um, it's very progressive, and hopefully by the end of before the end of the year, we'll have been in those two exchanges and, and in other exchanges as well. And our goal for 2021 is simple: we're trying to have like Africa-centric DApps that will be deployed on the BIMX uh, mainnet once it becomes available, and that's it. Great, thanks a lot. I like it. Proof of proof of work ambassador program. That's nice. <laughs> cool. And so. Let's move to the next speaker, who is Mr. Suhas from India. Are you with us? Yes. Uh, hi, guys. Uh, pretty nice to join the uh, call today. Uh, I have a pretty bad connection here today, so apologies uh, if, if you can't hear me clearly. So um, let me start off. Beam India, uh, I'm a lead of Beam India. Uh, my name is Suhas Hegde. I'm also been known as Migo Esperandos in the cryptosphere. And so let me just uh, give you a brief uh, introduction uh, in uh, Beam India. So uh, we have had events, uh, which mainly consists of AMAs, webinars, uh, meetups, and also cafe hangouts. Um, and uh, we have uh, created content in five different languages. Uh, so our approach is very different uh, when it comes to India, because India is a land of uh, diverse cultures and languages. So we want to, uh, you know, build a grassroots uh, community. So uh, the five languages uh, we have reached out uh, so far is uh, Hindi, uh, English, Odia, Gujarati, and Bengali. Uh, and of course, Tamil as well. Uh, I think uh, Tamil got missed out here. So uh, we also started the Beam Dose Initiative. Uh, we have uh, quite a small team of five active members, uh, but they're all uh, very uh, efficient. And also we are very... Um, uh, open to uh, new members as well. So we are working on merchant adoption uh, across uh, Indian mega cities, uh, mainly in Bangalore, Bangalore, which is a tech capital of India, uh, also Delhi and Hyderabad. So we're trying to see how we can fix the price volatility issue for the merchants. Uh, I'm sure maybe we need to come up with a, a you know stable coin on Beam, uh, which can be a confidential asset uh, or something like that. And uh, so 2021 goals is uh, basically incubation of developer program and uh, partnership with six different universities uh, for building dApps on BMAX. Uh, I, I'm really bullish on this because, uh, you know, the possibilities are pretty much limitless and we have uh, uh, such a good tech team and uh, our tech stack is going to be brilliant. So I'm sure we can do great things there. And uh, we also want to start a privacy centric column uh, in localized uh, news publications and outlets. So I think this is really important because there is a need for awareness of privacy, you know, why we need privacy. Because a lot of people, I also think the timing is really good because uh, of this whole, uh, uh, you know, you can say controversy where people are uh, leaving WhatsApp and moving to privacy centric platforms like Signal and, you know, Telegram and things like that. So we want to uh, sort of uh, take the lead here and uh, at the same time introduce uh, Beam to them. And we also want to build more presence in uh, four to six major cities with the Beam India Shining marketing campaign. So this is going to be a viral campaign. Uh, I don't want to reveal too much what it's going to be, but once it's ready across these cities, you will see for yourself. Uh, it's really going to be exciting. Uh, and of course, we want to um, uh, also 
uh, try to see how we can encourage more miners to get on board because uh, uh, you know that that's why the real fun is because beam is purely pow so yeah you're all welcome if you're watching and uh, if you want to join beam india please reach out to me uh, we love to have you guys uh, thank you so much for uh, uh, having patience and listening to me <laughs> thank you very much great update <laughs> really excited and speaking of miners I think it's the most loaded slide here in this presentation. I would love to give the microphone to Rascal. Can you unmute yourself or do I have to find you here? Okay, now you can. Hi guys, um, yeah, uh, I'm here to remind you the most important part of BEAM is the proof of work behind it. And uh, my job, as you can usually tell, I'm in the I'm in the the chat channels quite a lot because I'm a bit of a chat whore. But um, behind the scenes, I do quite a lot <clears throat> um, with regards to monitoring the network, uh, the Beam network, and uh, making sure the the test networks are running for our developers to make sure that they can in turn, uh, you know, progress what's coming on Beam. So as we move forwards. Uh, to reiterate the fact that, um, you know, there's going to be a hell of a lot good stuff happening on Beam. Don't forget the basic, uh, the basic work of it um, is the mining. Um, anybody can run a pool. And recently um, we managed to find out a way to support offline addresses as well. So if you're mining Beam, you don't need to have your wallet online to receive uh, a payment. Um, looking at my calculators at the moment um, and with great thanks to um, Lolly uh, Vilkitre who developed the algorithm for Beam Hash 3 um, we are stably the most profitable coin to mine on 4 gigabyte AMD GPUs um, and this is uh, this is a, a statistic that hasn't changed in months. Um, so regardless of how Ethereum or such like are, are so profitable on your larger cards, we're always here for you on your uh, on your smaller GPUs. So if you've got an, a GPU in your uh, in your computer, you know what to do: point it at the pool, stick an offline address in there, and just let it let it rack up, stack up your growths. <laughs> Great idea. Thank you very much. And uh, we will share all the links to, to the pool, uh, to the open source implementation. And uh, of course, uh, we will move on to the next topic. So now from the BIM Foundation, we have Amir. Let me unmute you. And here you are. Hey, guys. Pleasure to be here. So I'll be talking a bit about the foundation focus. So I'll start with a kind of hot topic that was in the community in the, in the past two months, which is a, a transparency report. So we're now closing the financial year. Uh, I know that you already uh, already closed, but financially it takes usually about two to three months uh, delay. So we're closing it soon. And then we will uh, publish a financial report, which covers the, the usage of BIM. Uh, also, in this regard, we are looking for board members, uh, experts in the field of privacy, research, and also regulation. Uh, so if you know any very high-level guy, please uh, direct them to the foundation uh, website or to me directly. Uh, to the community will be cool as well. Um, we are also working in the past year of, uh, on a, a crowd voting and funding system. Uh, so the foundation in the coming year will be able to be more transparent and to allow uh, community members to vote, suggest ideas. Uh, those are those systems are really common in other projects and we watched and learned and we shall probably post it uh, and publish it uh, in the coming months. Um, another few focuses we are having recently is uh, to form a coalition of uh, a security firms and auditing firms to allow app developers and entrepreneurs who are going to build on top of BeamX uh, the option to get verified by well-known firms. Uh, it will be very uh, important both for the users and both for the developers themselves. Uh, it's gonna be also very beautifully, beautifully designed uh, on, the webs on the wallet itself. Uh, another coalition we're trying to form is an accounting coalition. So like we have Beam accepted here, so we want to give our compliant users and businesses mostly uh, an option to um, report their Beam 
the opt-in or B2B2C features that we uh, talked to from the get-go. So we want to take it to the next step and basically make it easier also to find the right uh, CPA, accountant, that already familiar with the system and knows how to uh, basically um, report and audit your activity. Um, and another thing that uh, Gus mentioned uh, a few slides back, so we will be launching our outreach uh, program, which will be carried by a BMCA. It's going to be named RAISE, and the foundation is going to, of course, issue it on, on its behalf. And it's really, really, uh, it's going to be really, really, really nice. So keep tuned in this regard. That's Thank you very much, Amir, from BIM Foundation. Thanks a lot. Okay, that's been awesome. And now we're going to move on to the second part of this presentation, which will talk about our roadmap. And uh, we are asked a lot of questions about that all the time. So I will try to do it as uh, you know efficiently as possible because actually there are a lot of interesting things to talk about and I will gladly continue talking about them in the community channels or over video or any other means of communication. But today I would like to present an overview of what is going on right now. So, as you know, at the end of last year, uh, we had our 5.x uh, version, which started with the fork in June. And during that fork, we have added Lilantos Mewal Wimble, confidential assets, uh, and of course, features that are based on top of it, such as offline transactions, max privacy transactions, and many others. And in order to complete this part of our roadmap, we have two more releases in, in the 5.x in Eager Electron era, which uh, are the mobile wallet with the mobile node. Very important release because it allows us to basically use our mobile wallets more freely without having it necessarily connected to a specific node to get all the information. It's major achievement and we're going to use it in many of our additional products as I will talk about in, in a second. And this release has already happened just, I think, last week. So you can download the latest version and you have the mobile node built in there. And the last release of the Eager Electron era will be the 5.3, which will include additional atomic swaps with Ethereum, with DAI, with USDT, Tether, and uh, with wrapped Bitcoin, in addition to all the other currencies that are already supported by our atomic swap marketplace. Uh, so as you know, Ethereum is pretty quick, 15 seconds per block. So these swaps will be very quick as well, probably two to three minutes in, in general. And uh, we think it's going to be a great addition to our atomic swap family. And it's going to be used a lot, uh, especially because it's completely decentralized and censorship resistant, no KYC, built into the wallet, very easy to use. And this is happening in February. So then we move to the new era, the Fierce Fermion, which was announced as part of our roadmap quite a while ago. However, the contents are constantly changing because of the different development that's going on and different efforts that move either slowly or quicker than we expected. So the fork to Fierce Fermion 6.0 uh, is happening around end of March this year. And starting this time, we are actually in the BMX functionality era, which as we mentioned, includes smart contracts on Beam chain and in our wallets. And also uh, in the future, more and more applications, simple application at first. And then in time we will develop the, or work on developing infrastructure for all of the applications that are listed uh, in the right column. And we have discussed stablecoin, decentralized exchange, which will be also built into the wallet lending platform and uh, of course, the very important bridges in order to move liquidity from initially Polkadot and Ethereum and then uh, other chains as well. So starting from this fork, basically all of the functionality that is currently deployed to the BMAX testnet is going to be available on mainnet. And once again, it's already released. The documentation is available, even though it's not complete because the development is happening very quickly but you can go to our website and read about it and download uh, the wallet and the nodes and play with it and try to develop contracts for it as well. And now I will give this slide to our product manager, Sasha Bramovic, who will explain to you what's going on in the UI. So 
Thanks, Alex. Hello, everyone. Um, so starting from 6.0, we our wallet uh, will emerge into a full-fledged suite uh, with built-in App Store and embedded, which is capable um, of running full-fledged apps. Um, and if in 6.0, we will have a few very simple apps that are um, basically like think of red envelope or vault, then from 6.1 and beyond the real life financial instruments will start to appear in the BIM wallet. Uh, so you can expect trading of, com uh, of confidential assets. And um, when you trade confidential assets with BIM, the transaction will be ultra fast because um, it basically is done on the same blockchain of BIM. So it's, uh, yeah, so it will be very fast. And then uh, you will be able also to trade any confidential asset um, with um, Bitcoin, Litecoin, Qtum, Dash, Ethereum, DAI, USDT, and so on, straight from your wallet in a completely decentralized way. So um, yeah, I'm personally very excited to see all, all the apps that are coming from 6.1 and beyond. And we will, of course, top it with um, superior user experience as always. Thanks, Alex. Back to, back to you in the studio. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, indeed, it's uh, going to look very pretty and it's going to work well as well. And now uh, let's talk about the interesting part, which is basically questions that we hear from all over about staking and yield farming and things that people are doing on Ethereum today. What is going to be with that in Beam? Or in a more simple form, what people are saying is, okay, great. You talk a lot about all of these nice things, but how do I make money? And once again, so our idea is to provide this ecosystem that allows you to move value from other chains or to create new value on Beam, including confidential assets that you can create or create contracts that will create confidential assets. And then you will have a ability to basically trade these assets, as Sasha mentioned, from inside your wallet in any of the ways that you can now do on Ethereum as well, which includes just basically sending transactions, confidential transactions with any one of those assets. And of course, also doing atomic swaps as you are doing today. And in addition to that, all of the things that are also kind of pillars of our DeFi ecosystem today, the stable coins, the lending platforms, and all of those ideas. Uh, so all of those concepts are actually part of your, your ability to provide liquidity to those platforms, either in Beam or in wrapped assets on top of Beam. So once we complete this part of creating this ecosystem, Beam will become this kind of very confidential, uh, you know, uh, place where you can move value easily into and out of, and then trade it confidentially using all of these applications. So obviously it will include staking and yield farming. And we hope that uh, we will see, in addition to the, those applications that we are definitely doing this year, also uh, people who will either fork those projects and create their versions or playing out, create them from scratch, because we believe that privacy is very important for the DeFi world. And uh, we think that as the time passes, people will appreciate this more and more because today, as you know, uh, most of the DeFi applications on, are on public blockchains, completely transparent, which causes a lot of problems. And we will talk about that as well. So I see here people are still joining. Okay. Now let's dive a little bit deeper uh, in the time that we have and uh, talk about a little bit more geeky stuff. However, I do think it's important. So we do get a lot of questions about how Beam privacy works still, even uh, during our last AMAs. People are joining and hearing about our project for the first time. And of course, it's a very big topic. But basically, uh, once you get to know how Beam privacy works, you can never go back in a way. And in very, very short summary, it's several different protocols that come together to provide the best possible privacy that we could. Mimblewimble, as you know, our base protocol from the very beginning. 
and it allows us for confidential transaction, which very high scalability in terms of the blockchain size, making be very efficient, less information to download, to join. And on top of that, we have added Lilantos Mimble Wimble, which not only allows us to break linkability, which is one of the weaknesses relative of Mimble Wimble, which we have fixed using this protocol, but also provides us with additional features like offline transactions. And also uh, we have this specific public offline address that could be used for donations. And you can just publish it on a website and use it just like you would Bitcoin address or any other. And also, of course, max privacy transactions that allow you to achieve great uh, anonymity set of up to 64K. And on the lower level of the network, we have Dandelion, which is rerouting your transactions as they happen in order to obfuscate the source where they came from. And in the future, we, we already have Tor integration at some level. However, in the future, we're also uh, planning of adding integrations projects like Neem or other lower layer uh, mixnets so that you will be even more protected on the IP layer and you know uh, make it even better. So our wallets, we have currently, as I said, desktop wallet and mobile wallet, and we're also adding web wallet uh, this year. So the desktop wallet comes with integrated full node, which is recommended con configuration. Of course, you can use it with a remote node, but uh, if you're running or on a PC, you can definitely run uh, our full node in from inside the wallet without any additional configurations. And in the mobile wallet, we have just released the mobile node, which is uh, very secure as well. And we'll talk about those differences in a minute. And we are also using this mobile node technology in the web wallet, which will be released soon. And the web wallet is very important, not just because it's an additional way to in interact with Beam, but also because we are uh, talking about integrating it with other existing wallets like MetaMask in order to allow more seamless operations to move liquidity from uh, Ethereum or Polkadot and other networks to Beam and uh, make it as simple as possible without like any additional hassle. And um, uh, as I said, the mobile node is a subset of a full node, which does all of the validations in terms of security. So it downloads blocks and validates them and finds your TXOs in the blockchain. What it does not do is broadcast transactions or broadcast blocks uh, further. So it doesn't uh, waste all of your bandwidth and uh, CPU power on that. And of course, we also have a blockchain explorer, which has its own node, which provides additional information that you would like to see in the explorer, but do not need in everyday operation of Beam. And thus we have those building blocks, essential building blocks that will be become more and more uh, important as we release BeamX uh, in the end of March. And those are the shaders that I have talked about, the bridges, uh, the sidechains and the oracles that I will talk about in a minute. So let's go over that quickly. So as I said, shaders is Beam version of smart contracts. They're running not just in the node and on the blockchain, but also inside the wallets to allow easy creation of transactions that those contract shaders can understand. What it means for you as a user is that you open our wallet and you launch an application that is look, it looks just exactly like any other web application you would open in your browser. However, inside this application can access your secret keys when it's needed, with your permission, of course, create the transactions, understand what's going on inside the contract. And just to give you one example why this is important is because, for example, in Ethereum, if the transaction fails, you still pay the fee. And sometimes this fee is pretty substantial. I heard about people who are like, wasted hundreds of dollars on transactions that just didn't go through for some reason. So in Beam, this is not possible. If the transaction fails, it does not go into the blockchain. And of course, the blockchain is not uh, becoming larger because of those failed transactions and you not, do not pay the fee, most importantly. So this is like one of the advantages of this architecture. And also these shaders are running on Beam Virtual Machine, which supports WebAssembly in its core technology. And this means that you can create these contracts not just in like new language like Solidity, but in any language that can be compiled into WebAssembly, such as C++, Go, Rust, and uh, we're working on supporting all of those. I think it's very important for creating ecosystem of developers, you know, using technologies that they already know, that has a lot of available tools and basically a lot of great documentation. Uh, I think it will make things easier than just inventing a new language for that purpose. And of course, developers are wanted and welcome. 
Uh, we will gladly help anyone to get started developing these uh, applications. It's not a simple task, but it's, I think, will be very interesting. And of course, we're also working on our own set of tools to make this possible and simpler. And I think most of them will also be released this year. Decentralized bridges. This is a very important topic and we will dedicate more additional videos and articles about that because of basically two things. First of all, this technology is kind of unique because there are a lot of bridge technologies out there. Most of them work using some kind of federated or centralized or proof of stake decentralized blockchains behind them. In our case, uh, bridges are completely decentralized, which means that they're censorship resistant. No one can uh, decline or deny any transaction going through the bridge. And currently we're working on bridges for Ethereum and Polkadot so that you just take your value you have on either of those chains, lock it and get exact same amount of wrapped asset on, on Beam and then you can use it as any other confidential asset on Beam from inside your wallet. And what makes this possible is the combination of two technologies that we have implemented. One is called Fly Client, which makes uh, possible to create very small proofs um, that allow you to basically synchronize two blockchains using smart contracts, not a simple thing to do. And the other one is optimistic rollups so that these operations are as cheap as possible in the average case and are only fall back to the full proof uh, when there is some dispute. Um, the combination of these two texts and of course, as I mentioned, integration of the web wallet with existing uh, wallets for Ethereum, we hope will make this experience basically one click away. And uh, it's also going to be happen relatively fast. So it's not going to be like hours, maybe a couple of minutes or like 10 minutes and you will have your value on the other chain. And of course, it's completely confidential. Now, when we have developed these uh, contracts on Beam side uh, for, the, for the bridges, we have realized that there is an interesting application that can be achieved if we put Beam from both sides of the bridge. And you would say like, why, why do you need that? And the, question, the answer for that is, if we take Beam and we switch the consensus, for example, to something else like proof of stake or PBFT or DAG or any other, you get this kind of a sidechain concept. So we have Beam on one side, which is proof of work and the regular Beam as you know and like, but then you can create a sidechain which will be, for example, centralized or like PBFT or some kind of like uh, permission consensus. But now you can move assets very quickly from Beam to the sidechain and back using the same bridge technology. And you can actually do that from within the same wallet. So your wallet is actually connected to several sidechains and if you want speed, you can move it to like proof of stake or PBFT chain, or you can have any other like se se separate applications running on a side chain than those that are running on the mainnet. And we think that we can do a lot of interesting things with this technology. And so in the next couple of weeks, we will be showcasing this in this kind of proof of concept demo that we're currently developing. Uh, and we think it's going to be very interesting to see. Basically kind of a Polkadot parachain idea, but with confidentiality and integrate it into one wallet. And this is Guy Korem uh, sewing the Monero logo. No context at all. Okay, thank you very much. And now we're moving to the questions part, which means I am stopping my screen share and I will take a look at all of you in a second. And you will raise your hand if you want to ask questions. Nice questions only, please. Okay. Let me lower this hand and let me open the chat. Uh, Amir, uh, you, you have some questions that were asked earlier as well, right? In case nobody answer, asks anything. Yes, let me pull it out from the form. Okay, uh, Agbono, you have a question? No, okay. So just type type things here, or we will we have uh, uh, prepared the bulk of questions from earlier in case nobody asks anything. Okay.
About lending, yes, improvement in transaction speed in a second. Okay, so lending. Uh, lending is, I think, one of three uh, pillar, like very important applications that we currently have uh, on Ethereum and in DeFi in general. And the idea is that you have one type of token and you want another type of token, but you don't want to just sell your token. You want to be able to somehow transform it or provide liquidity in form of one token and get liquidity in, in uh, form of other tokens. So this is most of the lending applications today. That's that's what they're doing, compound, etc. And this is the complementary of three, as I said, three markets, the trade, like AMM-based trading market, the lending market, and the confidential uh I'm sorry, and the stable coin market, confidential or not, uh, all of those are important. So we think creating one of those applications on Beam uh, will have like, it's basically essential. You cannot do without it. Uh, improve it in the transaction speed. Great question. So as you know, we have been talking about several ideas for scalability in uh, transaction per second parameter. Right now we're like, almost like Ethereum, basically 15, I think something like that, 16 uh, transactions per second, like the current Ethereum, not the mythical Ethereum 2.0, which will be uh, awesome, but you know, in the future. And uh, one of the things that were announced on our website is uh, GhostDAG, which is a research that we actually did. So GhostDAG is uh, an ability to scale proof of work blockchain with an N factor of branching. So instead of having like one blockchain, which like one block follows the other, you have this kind of a tree with some branches and the more branches you have in the tree, the more transactions you can actually process in a second. And uh, we have finished the research, it's done. And now we're completing the BMAX roadmap. And once we have that, as you saw in the previous slide, we have this sidechain idea. And one of the consensus that we can have in this sidechain is basically DAG based or specifically goals DAG. And then at least at first you will have a quick, quick sidechain of Beam. And then we'll think about what to do with it in the future. Uh, it has a lot of implications on our mining ecosystem and others. So that's, that's the road there. Um, partnerships. Okay. I, I, I will get back to, to previous questions as well. We have announced partnership with uh, Chainlink to create oracles because oracles are essential for most DeFi applications that use any kind of external data or have like uh, any kind of non-crypto uh, value related to it or crypto that originated non, not on Beam Chain but somewhere else. And uh, uh, I think the, the first implementation of our oracles that will come once we have BMX launched, it will be uh, in cooperation with Chainlink as we have announced and we're working on that with them as well. Okay. Uh, yes, so DEX. DEX, we have two ideas for DEX. First one, as we said, is like Uniswap, basically AMM based. AMM is automated market maker, which means that you have an algorithm to balance either a pair or several currencies in the pool in some way. Uh, these algorithms, by the way, are very interesting, very diverse family of algorithms are used uh, in different projects um, in order to prevent or uh, minimize the impermanent loss that you have in Uniswap specifically and other ideas. And uh, we would definitely have that. However, in addition to this, we just need a simple way to trade confidential assets, either wrapped or native to Beam from inside your wallet. And for that, we will use the same idea that we have today for the Atomic Swap Marketplace and basically create this kind of decentralized exchange inside the wallet. And we're also thinking about how to make it uh, backed by smart contracts. So you don't have to be like online for all types of transactions all the time, or you maybe you can trade uh, when you're offline as well, just like you can on decentralized exchange. You can just put the position and leave it there uh, with some uh, conditions uh, such as stop loss or uh, any other that you might have. So that's in the works as well. and. Uh, some of the screenshots that you saw in this presentation and additional that uh, are shared with the community uh, also include this concept as well. Okay, one second. Oh, there's a long question here. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. From the forum, I have some questions. If I get CA BTC in BMX, how can I convert directly CA BTC to BTC? That's a great question. Um, so, 
Bitcoin, as you know, uh, does not have smart contracts. It has Bitcoin scripts, so you have a very limited amount of operations that you uh, can do. And yes, of course, atomic swaps work because somebody sends to someone Bitcoin and in exchange gets beam. But moving Bitcoin as a value in a completely decentralized way to beam is not possible. So I'm sorry, it's possible to move it one way, but not another. You can lock it forever here and get wrapped Bitcoin uh, on beam, but not get it back. And I'm not sure anyone will go for that. But uh, uh, all the solutions that we have today for Bitcoin, like wrapped BDC and others, are centralized or federated in some way, usually backed by collateral that people leave uh, in exchange. But it's a problem because basically you have a bridge which is collateralized to the degree of the value that it can move. Like if you move one BTC, you have to put two BTC and a collateral on Ethereum to do that. Right? It's, it's difficult to scale this idea. In our case, it's not necessary because our bridges are decentralized from one point. But the limitation is that it will not work with BTC uh, in, in the near future and until they upgrade the protocol and, uh, you know, probably will take time. Results of the BIM smart code audit will be published. All our audits are published and uh, definitely. Uh, now, regarding the smart contracts themselves, what Amir was talking about is basically creating this uh, family of verifiers for those contracts, people who audit contracts professionally. And then when you open your application store inside BIM wallets, you will be able to see which of these contracts were audited and by whom, and what was the rating and all of this data. And this is something I really wish would exist on Ethereum because as you know, like when you access an application, it takes you time to research who exactly wrote it and who audited it and when and what changed since then and like all of that stuff. Or you just open a website and click, you know, buy, buy, buy or sell, sell, which is also okay. But um, if you want to know what is the status of that contract on Ethereum, it requires a lot of research. We're really hoping to make this more accessible. We think it's very important for users to know that the application that they're using is audited and uh, verified by someone they can trust. Um, Plans for CA, BTC, atomic swap, definitely possible. Okay, um, let's see, we need to detail the roadmap. We definitely need more activity, I agree with that. We need more marketing, I agree with that as well. And our price has gone down. And if there's anything we can do. Good question. Okay, so let's uh, answer this uh, bunch of questions about our marketing and about our price going down and, uh, or, or, or not and that stuff. So, uh, 2021 for us is going to be, I think almost as, uh, I don't want to use the word revolutionary because it's like Steve Jobs word, but it's going to be very, very important because we move from just being a confidential cryptocurrency even though the best confidential cryptocurrency, but it's one like simple functionality on, of moving value confidentially from one wallet to another into a platform with a lot of new uh, features and possibilities and capabilities. And not only that, we want to become really part of an ecosystem by trying to integrate ourselves into the existing DeFi world from both Ethereum and Polkadot sides, but also others uh, any, basically any platform that supports smart contracts can be bridged to BIM in the future, which is why we make these calls, we publish our roadmap, we do all the work, and of course, we have our ambassadors and our community, and we try to make it as organized as possible, explain everything, and also uh, promote our ideas and our goals throughout wherever we can. We organize AMAs, we organize meetups, virtual today, we appear at conferences every once in a while. And uh, needless to say that any ideas that you have, if you hear about a conference we should attend or any AMA that we can do, uh, you are welcome. And if you have contact to any other uh, I know, websites or somebody who publishes the news and you can promote us there, we're also open to any suggestions. So we're doing a lot and uh, we will do as much as we can. And if you can help us, we're really, really, really thankful and will be great. Uh, so far, our community has been amazing. And uh, 
both the level of the discussions and uh, all the action that's happening, even though I'm maybe participating a little bit less than I would love to in the community chat. Uh, but still, it's been great so far. And I think it will be even better this year with all of the new stuff that's going on. And it's quite a lot. Uh, BIMCA is not similar to ERC20. I'm going to the next question here in the chat. Because BIMCA does not require a smart contract, you can just run a wallet command and create a new CA. And then you can send it to other people or destroy it. However, when we're talking about, for example, application that is running on BMX that issues some kind of a token for yield mining, this CA is not controlled by a person. It's controlled by a contract and it's very important distinction. So the, basically the contract, which is open source and you can review it and you can see what it does, controls both the emission and the burning of the CA, which makes it much more reliable because a person, as you know, can either print a lot of CA or destroy them or do anything he wants. Not so with the contract. The contract has specific rules. And this is how, uh, of course, the whole this whole ecosystem is going to work by allowing uh, to control the contracts, uh, the CA from the contract. Uh, yeah, so basically staking of BIM coins is either using some applications that run on BIM X uh, that allow that, or when or if we provide si some sidechains with proof of stake, you can go there and stake there in order to get your rewards on the sidechain. Uh, fixed max supply CA not possible at the moment. Um, however, the way it's working is um, the emission of the CA is, uh, is visible you can see when the new CA is minted. Uh, so if you kind of, um, uh, I don't know, let's say uh, announce that you're going to only emit 21 million of a certain CA, and then you, you break the promise that will be seen. However, at the moment, we do not allow uh, limit this limitation. Good question. I will check whether this is an interesting case that we can support. Okay, let me admit some people in the waiting room. Do we have any more questions? No. Yes, no. Let's share some screen here. Okay, so follow us on all of our community channels and YouTube, uh, where I appear every once in a while. And um, you know, thank you very much for being here. And have a great day, and uh, we will see you soon.